Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. It is my delight to welcome you, and I thank you for being with us right now. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ruth, a little four-chapter book there back by the book of Judges in your Bible. I want to invite you, if you can, to reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. If you are one that's never had a class, never had somebody teach in your church through the book of Ruth, I am excited to be the one to do that first. But I hope, I hope I'm not. I hope that you are well familiar with this little book, this four-chapter book. So if you can, get your Bible out and join me. Ruth chapter 1, also reach over and get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got four words all beginning with the letter D to give you here today. I have a gospel tract in my hand. That word tract is T-R-A-C-T. I am referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation, and I want to highlight a particular track here today and encourage you to get a free sample packet of our tracks, but I'll say more about that here in just a moment. We are at this very moment at the initial days of our walk through the book of Ruth, and I'm calling it uh, Rummaging Through Ruth rummaging through Ruth. Well, that's my unofficial title anyway, but you do understand what I mean by rummaging through something, right? When you rummage through old clothes, you're looking for anything there you can still use. When you rummage through a house damaged by fire, you're looking for anything there you can still salvage and use. When you're rummaging through your parents' household goods after they've passed away, you're looking for valuable family memories that will help you and encourage you in days to come, things that you can use. Now, rummaging is when you deliberately look through things that you probably don't need so that you can find stuff that you do need. And I hope, I hope I can help you find stuff in the book of Ruth that you can use. But now, I'm going to give you my my official title. The unofficial title was Rummaging Through Ruth. My official title is this, Faith Finds Rest in Ruin. That's a great title and a great description of the book. Faith Finds Rest in Ruin. The book opens with an opportunity to live by faith, but it's squandered. A family ends up in ruin. The family got out of the will of God and they end up in ruin. Surprise, surprise. Before I go any farther here in our study, I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. The particular tract in my hand right now is one designed to use with children. It's The title of it is Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. It's a very clear track. It asks questions like, who is God? Who is Jesus? Who is the devil? Where did sin come from? What is sin? What happens when people die? How can you go to heaven? And so on. It's a great tool in trying to lead your children, your grandchildren, your kids and that are in your Sunday school class. If you've got a neighborhood Bible study for kids, a great tool for kids. And by the way, it's even a good tool to hand out to unsaved parents and just say to them, hey, do your kids ever ask you questions about God? They're probably going to say yes. Well, and just say, here's a great tool that may help you explain some things about God. And just say to the parents, it probably wise for you to read it through first. If you have any questions, come talk to me. And who knows what God is able to do through a kiddo track in the hands of an adult. Great track. Seven questions boys and girls ask. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you some ways by which you can contact us, giving us your name and address. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org, BibleTracksInc.org. 
and you can order the sample packet there online. By the way, there's a lot of stuff there on the website that may encourage you. There's some videos there that you might just enjoy watching. If your Bible's open to the book of Ruth chapter 1, here is how it begins. Now it came to pass in the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the name of the two sons, Malon and Kilian, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab, and the name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Kilian died, also both of them, and the woman, speaking of Naomi, was left of her two sons and her husband. Stop, please, right there. That's verses one through five. These five verses form the first paragraph in this book. My title for the entire chapter one is this, a damaged woman, a damaged woman. And in chapter one, we actually find three damaged women. The death of their husbands has left these three women in ruin. Verses one through five give us the wreckage described. Notice the two word title, wreckage described. That's my outline title for verses one through five, wreckage described. Let me use a series of words, all beginning with the letter D, like in the word donut, to see how this wrecked family got into the state and so on. Word number one is the word dilemma, based upon verse one, dilemma. It came to pass, verse 1 says, in the days when the judges ruled that a famine came to the land. That's the opening statement of the book. Now, the famine was the dilemma uh, first for the entire nation, to be sure, but nations are made up of individuals and families. So this is a dilemma for this family unit. If you are even somewhat familiar with the patriarchs of Israel, and by the patriarchs I'm speaking of the men like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you're familiar with them, then you know that they're, they are the fathers of the nation, and they had a, a history of facing famines. Their history is well known to the nation of the Jews. Generation after generation would repeat the story of how their nation got started. The holy days that were established by God for the nation were particular times when the older generations would rehearse the stories of the nation. One of those uh, that was famous for facing a famine was Abraham. When Abraham faced a famine, he headed for Egypt, and the people, the Jewish people, knew the trouble that that step brought. God gave the Jews the promised land. They were supposed to stay there. Abraham's story should have been burned into their minds that running from a famine away from the promised land was not the will of God. The Jews also knew the law of Moses. They knew those parts where God promised great blessing if the nation obeyed God. But they also knew the parts about the curses God would bring on the nation if they persisted in disobeying him. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and chapter 26 are just two of the places where God says that he will use famines to chastise the nation if they stayed in persistent disobedience. Now, the famine of Ruth chapter 1 came in an era of national wavering and stumbling in their walk with God. Everyone in the nation was doing, at least as a broad stroke would say, everybody was doing that which seemed right in their own eyes. Here is a Bible fact for you that, well, it may help you in some Bible trivia game sometime. Did you know the Bible records 13 different famines? Now, to be sure, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that there were far more famines than just 13, but God records 13. That number 13 is the number of rebellion. The man, Elimelech, rebelled against God's word. 
He got out of the will of God, and before too very long, this rebellion cost him and his two sons their lives. A couple of days ago, in case you missed the broadcast, I gave this lesson, and here's what I said, quote, if you get out of the will of God, you too can kill a family. May I politely say, I pastored 30 years before God brought me to the leadership of this gospel tract organization, and in those 30 years, I saw a lot of people who got out of the will of God, moms and dads, and it destroyed the family. Word number one is dilemma. Word number two is decision, still based upon verse one. Elimelech decided to move his family out of the promised land and go to Moab. Well, the people of Moab came into existence due to that guy named Lot and his stubbornness in disobeying God. You can find that out out in Genesis chapter 19. The Moabites were one of the Canaanite nations that God had warned the Jews to stay away from. Word number three is the word dwell. You'll find this whole idea in verse 1 and verse 4. Elimelech and his family went to sojourn in Moab, verse 1 says, and they stayed there 10 years, verse 4 or 5 says. Now, during those years, the two sons of Elimelech got married to two non-Israelite girls. This action further displays how stubborn and rebellious Elimelech's heart was for being involved with this. He was doing what seemed right in his own eyes, but it was out of the will of God, and he knew it. Let me give one more final word here. It's the word death, based upon verses 3, 4, and 5. Death, while living in Moab and while joining in the culture and society there of this pagan nation, all three of the men in the family died. If you'd read any Jewish commentators here, they're very blunt. They say openly that these three men died because they willfully, flagrantly rebelled against God. But wait a minute. What does the New Testament say? The wages of sin is what? It's death. Here we have a literal, bodily, physical fulfillment of that straightforward statement. Now, in the midst of all this... While the men in the family seemed to have failed to connect the dots with their disobedience and the death that was occurring, while they, the men didn't get it, there was a woman who apparently did see the connection. That was Naomi. It appears that Naomi's heart started off in rebellion but ends up in repentance. Well, that's the only pathway out of the failure of ungodly decisions. We must repent. That's where salvation begins, friend. We begin with the fact that we have decided to sin in our life, and it's wrong. It disobeys God. It's wicked. It'll drag us all the way to the lake of fire. But if we repent of our sin, if we repent of our sin, cry out to God for mercy and pardon, he will save us through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. Have you done that? Rebellion, disobedience, sin brings death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.